Welcome everybody to Forgotten Coast Fishing. I'm David. We've had about four days of rain and thunderstorms. Looks like we've got a pretty good day today. We've got one storm we're watching out for. So what we're gonna do while we see what that does is I've come out to only about 10 miles offshore, 60 feet of water. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put out some, some free lines on this rod and that rod with a dead cigar minnow butterfly. And that's just gonna sit out on the top surface, kind of float down a little bit and see if we can't catch some of those bigger red snappers. And then while that's happening, I'm gonna drop a, a double drop chicken rig with some squid and see if we can't pull up some fish that way. We're showing some good marks on the depth machine, so hopefully we can pick up some. All right, well, how I'm gonna rig up this cigar minnow is I'm gonna butterfly it just to give it a little more scent um, as it's sitting there soaking in the water. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of fillet it backwards, just running the light knife along the backbone, just kind of like you're filleting a fish. And then flip it over and just do the same thing on the other side. And then you can go ahead and tear this part out. That'll provide a little bit of chum. And how I'm gonna hook it, this is a length of about three foot of 80 pound leader. And this is a seven aught circle hook. And just so I can hook this through the hard part of the head, I'm gonna go up underneath the mouth, kind of right between the eyes and hook it through the top like that. Then I'm just gonna cast back just a little bit. I don't need to go too far because we're, we're pretty much on top of the reef. The reef is kind of out this way a little bit. So we wanna get this close to the reef. Kind of loosen the drag so you know, if a big fish does grab it, you're not gonna lose your rod. And then we're just gonna do the same thing on this side. And this is a Pin Battle 5000 with 30 pound braid. And this is a Shimano Talus PX. Well, I'm already getting a bite, y'all. Might've pulled it off. Nope, we got him, y'all. Oh, tighten up the drag. Tighten up the drag because I had it kind of loose there, you know, so we didn't lose the rod. Let's see, guys. Man, he's bigger than I thought at first. Let's see what we've got here, y'all. Hopefully we don't get in the other rig. Man, where's he going? Oh, we got off. Let's see what happened here, y'all. All right, so it didn't feel like a kingfish. It didn't kind of make that run. It felt more like an amberjack or a big snapper, but he did break my line. Let's just check to see if this one's still here. Okay, well, he got this one. So what I'm gonna do, since I've got to re-rig that one up anyway, I'm probably gonna put a little length of wire and a stinger rig just in case that was a kingfish. Um, he, if it's a kingfish, he's gonna keep breaking that mono. But this is still intact, so I'm gonna go ahead and get a cigar minnow out there while I'm rigging up this other rod again. How I'm gonna tie this is this is my braid and I've got a swivel to a number five 44 pound brown wire. And then on the end of that, I've got this number two live bait hook and then a treble hook on the end of that. And I'm gonna rig the cigar minnow on that. But how I attach this braid to this swivel, I'm just gonna do a standard uni knot. And I go seven wraps when I'm using braid like that. Pull it tight and you can take your braid scissors or sharp pliers if you got them. Oh, here we go again, y'all. All right, let me get down this drag first. All right, let's see if we can finally, whoa, he's going straight down. Well, this feels like an amberjack, y'all. Sure does. Oh, there he broke it again, or he got off. All right. Let's see what we're going on here. So this is not big enough line and gear for these. It, it really does feel like an amberjack. Yeah, well, it's sure going to the bottom and pulling that hard, steady pull like an amberjack. All right, so how I hook up the cigar minnow with this stinger rig, this is what I've tied myself. I kind of like when I'm using uh, frozen cigar minnows like this, I like to use this uh, two alt hook for the front. And I'm gonna hook it just like I was using that big circle hook, just through the bottom and out the top of the head. Just like that. 
I think that's going to hold decently well. And this with, with this stinger, just going to kind of bury that into the one of the sides and the towards the back. I'd like to see what this is. If this is amberjack, I'm not too interested in getting amberjack. It's red snapper season still, so we'd like to be able to get on some of those if we can. Oh, I got him. I got him. Had him the whole time. Oh, where's my drag? All right, now this is this wire, so hopefully we can get him up. This doesn't feel like one of those big ones that we were getting. Hopefully it's a nice snapper. It feels like it could be. Yep, let's see if he's going to... Red snapper, they got to be 16. Let's see if he measures out. So 16 to the fork. He's about a little over 15 and a half. So he's, he's going to go back. All right, we got him, y'all. All right, let's see what we can do here. Oh, come on. Mm, just don't get in the reef. We got the wire on there. But if we can keep the main line from hitting that reef, I think we've got something decent and something we're going to be able to pull in. Seeing some color. Looks like a red snapper, y'all. Looks like a nice red snapper. Yep, he's going to be our keeper. Let's see if we can get him in. Yes, y'all. That's one of our two keeper red snappers right here. It's exactly what I was wanting. So he is about 20 and a half to the fork. So let's get him in the box. Boy. All right, that was a nice snapper to get. So I'm gonna get the flat lines back out there. I'm gonna go ahead and put my two of them out there since that's what's uh, catching the fish right now. And see if we can't get uh, keeper number two. All right, so since we caught that red snapper on that flat line with that treble hook, here in Florida, if you're fishing for reef fish, which include red snapper, you're supposed to use a circle hook using live or dead bait. So I'm going to go back to an 8 alt circle hook, and this is 80 pound leader, and I've got about about three foot of it. So hopefully, you know, we won't get broken off like we were before. So how I'm going to hook it same way. I'm going to go back up under the head and kind of between the eyeballs, poke it through through that hard part of the cigar minnow. Let's go ahead and get our other one out. And I'm just going to leave this hole. See if that makes any kind of difference. That last one that I just caught, I had left whole. Don't know how that would make a difference, but got to have some rhyme to reason for what you do out here. Here we go, y'all. Here we go. Oh, man. Another good one. Oh, this may be an amberjack. Uh, see if we can slow him down a little bit. Mm. Man. Yeah, I would say this is an amberjack. Uh. There he broke. I would say that's most likely an amberjack that we took this wire off because we're catching reef fish on these free lines out here. Well, I guess we're just gonna have to weed through the amber jacks to get these snapper. Can't complain we're catching fish. Just having a lot of break offs. 80 pound mono is the heaviest I got. I could start to rig um, these hook circle hooks on a wire. I just need to rig them up. If this continues though, and we don't get our second snapper soon, we'll go ahead and do that. Here we go. All right, here we go. Let's see if we can get him up. Come on, come on. I got a sinker slinging all over the place over here. All right. Let's focus on the fish. Focus on the fish. Oh, if we can get, we're right on top of the reef, y'all. Man, we gotta get this under control here. Okay, there we go. Right on top of the reef, guys, and I don't want him going down on the reef. All right, let's see. Man. Oh, another good snapper. Here's our number two snapper, y'all. Look at that one, y'all. All right. 
I hate to say it, but we limited that on red snapper already. That's a nice one. Look at that snapper. Obviously not the biggest out there, but he's a nice snapper. He's gonna go in the box. We get to keep two above 16 inches here in Florida. He's gonna be that 20 and a half or so like the other one. But he makes our two per person limit. So we're gonna go ahead and get him in the box. All right, y'all, time for a little lunch. This is a life, huh? Got my breeze coming through here. Got my Vienna sausages. Got some crackers. All kind of things. Peanuts. I'm just going to take a little break here, y'all. We'll have us a good lunch, y'all. We'll get some things back out there. All right, I'm showing some really good marks on the bottom machine. So I'm not going to worry about moving or anything. I'm just going to change what I'm fishing for. Since I've got those two red snappers, I don't want to kind of keep trying for those and just pulling them up, you know, for no reason. So those marks right there could be some vermilion or trigger fish or something like that. So what I've done, I've switched over to a bottom rig. This is a chicken rig, same sort of deal that I was fishing earlier, except this is um, a 40 pound leader, still that four ounce weight but I've got four aught circle hooks and I'm using squid again. So that smaller hook, uh, lighter line, hopefully will, will kind of attract whatever that is. And it's not at the bottom, so or quite at the bottom, so I'm gonna go two thirds of the way down or something like that and see if we can't grab whatever I'm seeing on the machine there. It's amazing how these fish can just get this squid off so easily. I've got these cup holders on this grady. What I like to do is put that sinker while I'm baiting up, put that sinker in that cup holder just to keep it from flying around. Oh, here we go. Oh, I forgot to try it my drag up. Here we go. This is a good one. Some sort of snapper it feels like. No trigger fish. Well, I was thinking it might be either a trigger fish or a vermilion out there down there. But this is a trigger fish. He's going to be too small. Plus, he's out of season right now. There you go. A little trigger fish. I know you've seen this before, but I'll show you while I'm here. You know, this front dorsal fin will not move at all but once you push down this smaller one right here kind of triggers it down just kind of a neat thing about a trigger fish that's why they're called a trigger fish y'all i'm seeing something i've got this little 5000 shimano with a quarter ounce kind of imitation shrimp on here Let's see I can grab whatever that is over there. Gotten some reports of some my my out here. I'm gonna give that a shot for a second. That would be nice. Well, I'm getting strikes. This is a imitation shrimp on a quarter ounce jig head. I don't know if there's anything better in the tackle box. I got some gotcha plugs and some Rapala X wraps. I could put something like that on there or some bucktail jigs. Let's give that a try. Let's go ahead and do a little switch. Let's get this rod in since we're not really dealing with it anymore. Now one good thing about this chicken rig is when you're done with it for the day or you know at least for a few minutes you don't want this weight swinging around. It's easy to take off. Just stick it down in that little cup holder and then I'll have it for later. You don't have to worry about that weight swinging around on you. All right so this is a little gotcha plug that we're going to use now we're going to use a uni knot to, to tie it on but what we're going to do is we're going to do a kind of a loop knot uni knot i've done a video that shows a lot of these knots i'm tying and that i use it's um, preparing for red snapper um, check that out if you want some little more detail but how i'm going to do it is i'm just going to tie a standard 
uni knot. I'm gonna go around six or seven times. I think that was six. Kind of pull it the tag in, but don't go too tight. Not sure if this is even showing up, but then you're gonna moisten it, pull that knot down till you get close to your lure. If I had some pliers, I would tighten this up with pliers, but my fingers should do. But the idea is if you tighten your tag up without your knot close to the end, it'll hold right there, kind of like a loop knot. It's really preferable to have a pair of pliers so you can really cinch down that knot, but that'll do. And what that does, that'll just leave a little freedom, you know, for that uh, jig or plug or whatever you're using to just move a little more freely. A little bit further with it as well. Now this is a Shimano Stratic 4000 and this is a St. Croix medium heavy seven foot rod. Oh, here he is y'all. Got him. Got him. Got him. I just kind of blind cast it out there and as soon as I started reeling I saw the fish working. Man. Staying down pretty good. Of course this is, oh, this is either a Spanish or a King. Oh, what have we got? This is a King mackerel, I think, y'all. Yep. Well, that's cool. I'm not going to be keeping these today. I don't think he's big enough as it is anyway. All right. Well, that's what I knew would happen. That was just a 20 pound fluorocarbon leader and of course that thrashing about in those teeth were no match for that. That's kind of cool. I'm going to I'm going to rig up some heavier leader, get that gotcha plug plug back out and see if we can't catch some more of those. That's kind of fun. Let me show you one little trick I like to do. This is not a, really a secret or anything, but I started doing this a long time ago. You know, for my leader, for the, for the most part I use mono um, out here and I just get it just a just a standard old mono uh, you know in a spool but to keep it from getting tangled up you see what I do I just get an old koozie and that's a carnival reminds you of good times as well but anyway I put that in there and that way you can kind of label it on top so you know what it is in case that you know label starts to kind of erode away but you can just a lot of times once you get your line sticking out like this you can just kind of pull out what you need this is what i'm going to put on the gotcha plug so i'm going to do a good distance of 40. all right so since we caught that king mackerel i'm going to go ahead and get my wire stinger rig set up on these flat lines again and uh, see if we can't catch any roman by I'm going to do this just like we were doing earlier. Get that single hook go up under the head, kind of through the mouth, out the top of the nose. That's really what's going to hold your fish. Burying this treble hook is really just going to keep it from flapping around. And you could leave it that. You could leave the treble hook just flapping around. I like to just hook it. again y'all wow that didn't take but a couple seconds in the water wow i don't know what this is man that was i mean literally i was just starting to reel in the slack to start jigging it wow y'all a nice king 30 pound mono whoop here he goes I was surprised how easy he was coming up at the beginning. I usually make that good initial run, then they see the boat, and you get run number two. Look at that. Let's see how I. Oh. 
Wow, y'all. That's a nice king. Sure is. All right, y'all. Making a mess of our boat. But here's a good old king. See what he measures out to be. Oh, here he is again, y'all. Here is it again. Man, just pitch and catch these king mackerels. It's kind of cool in this light tackle. Oh, did he get off? Oh, nope. He's still on. There he is. That's kind of cool. I'm surprised he's not breaking the leader. It's just 30 pound mono. All right, y'all. How fun is this? It's a decent king. Decent king. All right. Oh, nope. Didn't think he was ready. All right, come back up. So I can go under the boat. All right, let's get him up. Uh, man, geez, they're getting bigger. Probably, I'm not keep, since I'm not keeping them, I can't gaff them. A little over 30. All right, dude. There you go. Oh, ran into the boat. <laughs> wow. That's fun on that little light tackle. I'm surprised nothing's grabbing these flat lines out here. Let's try that again. All right, y'all. Finally got one on one of these. Oh. Let's see what we got. Pulling harder than what's been getting that light tackle rig. Maybe it is a king. Maybe it is a king. We're right on the reef, so whatever it is, I'm gonna try to keep it out. Oh, man. Oh, that's a king. Just a nice king. I'll try to keep him out of that other rig over there. No, you gotta come this way. Nope. Oh. Man. Oh man. Oh man. Man, you would come over where all the rods are. All right. Man. I was keeping them. Oh. I was keeping them. I would gaff them, but I'm not keeping those. I have a freezer full of this stuff already. So, let's just try to get them off. Dang, y'all. All right. They're getting bigger. Wow, my rod tip broke, y'all. That's a shame. That shouldn't have happened. That's a medium heavy rod. Well, that's a bummer. Without these pliers, I can't get my finger in there. So he's actually going to go in the ice box. We'll find a good home for him. He's the bigger one. He's right at 30. I wasn't going to keep King Mackle today. I've got a freezer full of them, but that treble hook was deep down in his throat. And I don't have any pliers and I'm not sticking my fingers down in there that mouth with all those teeth so we'll go ahead and take him home all right y'all i'm gonna go ahead and call it a day we had a pretty successful day getting those two red snappers it's nice to be able to keep those we're we've got about two weeks or so before um before that's closed for us so hopefully i can get out another time or two before red snapper season closed i appreciate you watching if you haven't subscribed i'd appreciate if you considered subscribing I'll try to put out a video once a week and try to give you on the water action and try to include all the tips and techniques that I use to find and catch these fish. And if you are subscribed, I certainly appreciate you. So until next time, 
I hope to see you on another episode of Forgotten Coast Fishing.